That is a straight up dragon in tabs. I almost can't believe it. Like, I kind of figured we might fight some kind of big mythical creature today, so I called in Kratos, but it turns out he's gonna be a little bit late, so maybe the farmer faction can deal with it on their own, defend themselves. Don't worry, guys, I'm sure Trogdor here doesn't have any experience burninating all the people. <laughs> Trogdor! He's way wonkier than I would have expected. He looks like a dragon, but he moves like a fly that just got slapped. What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That game that helps humanity answer the questions that we're just not brave enough to ask yet. Like what would happen to a hobbit if it hit the ground at terminal velocity? Like six story fall right into the dirt. I would imagine it will bounce. It got right back up, wait what? I mean, it kind of makes sense because it's the same size and shape as a beach ball, but I was kind of hoping for you know, a sweater vest left in a fuzzy red puddle. Usually Gandalf would be responsible for watching that guy, but to be perfectly fair, he's a little bit busy defending Earth from the forces of hell, which I'm going to be in control of. Like some of you guys may remember over the past couple of episodes, I've been helping both the armies of heaven and hell invade the world of the living. And right now, the only thing standing between hell and complete global domination is the legacy faction. And like everybody sees Gandalf as a sweet old man until he sends in peasants as cannon fodder. So they've decided to call this opening defense decimating strength, which is cool, I guess, but I probably would have gone with Colossal Oopsies because I could see one major error in their strategy that we can take advantage of. They want to rush me with the Kamikaze Barrel Rollers, but I could just use Shadow Walkers because then they're going to jump into the middle of the enemy formation and the Barrel Rollers are going to turn around and then explode on allies, enemies, everybody. Well, except for my army, who's going to be all the way down here. We will show up to the smoldering remains of the battle eventually. You know, we got our exiled sentinels, because I'm pretty sure all of the enemy's units are ranged. Except for the peasants, maybe a few boxers, but we don't really care about them. And uh, we could back them up with a couple of Tempest Liches just in case there's anybody left alive in a real tight formation. As long as the Shadow Walkers can turn those barrels around. There we go. <laughs> oh, uh, we may have missed one. That could be a problem. They could hurt. Come on, lightning. How hard is it to hit a guy on top of an exploding barrel? Oh, that did nothing. I keep forgetting just how beefy these ladies are. <gasps> All right. Well, it's like I said, they're very close together. As long as the lightning can rain down on these poachers, we should be okay. Uh, liches? Might want to hurry up with those storms, otherwise Gandalf is going to be the one to throw the lightning. Oh, okay, that actually worked flawlessly. Are they all dead? There's got to be somebody left alive, right? <laughs> Cardiac arrest? Oh, I don't know what just happened there, but either way, I guess we just needed to scorch their lawn a little bit, really send a message for the next battle. And here we are on the final battlefield, fittingly called Satanic March, where it looks like Thor and his lightning powers and his hyperactive horses think they can defend the world. I'm gonna leave a fat doubt on that one. Oh, hold on a second, it's not Thor, it's Thor's plural, that's a big difference. Like, we may have them surrounded, but I just wanted to have a Void Monarch 1v1 a Thor. You get like, Satan versus God, or close enough, but 3v1 is pushing it. Like, you need to be stretching days in advance for a Norwegian God gangbang, trust me. I really want to have Shadow Walkers jump on top of these pikemen, because then there's nothing that they can do. There's no way that you can poke somebody with a 10-foot-long pole when they're nut to butt with you. But the problem is, I'm pretty sure they're going to jump to the furthest unit, not to the center of the circle, which means most of them are going to either jump underneath the chariot or underneath Mjolnir. Both are a significant problem. And that does not leave me with much more money. I am out of luck here. 
I guess we could just try outnumbering them. What if I put exiled sentinels on this side and just buy enough time for the monarch to do his thing? Does that make any sense? Yeah, you see, they didn't go for the pikemen at all. They all jumped directly on top of Thor and then got shocked. And you got killed instantly. Oh, that's a problem. Almost as much of a problem as a moonwalking horse. <laughs> That's how you know you've lost. When the animals could do Michael Jackson impressions instead of fight, you're just screwed. This is a really weird scenario, because I'm pretty sure the Void Monarch's transformation is triggered by getting hit a couple of times. But if Thor hits you a single time, you don't get back up! Same kind of thing for the pikemen. So maybe we can put a couple of Void Monarchs down here, and then the chariots will rush over to them and whack them with their wobbly knees or whatever they do. You know, just enough to rile them up and get them to transform, become a big demon and fight the gods. Does that make any sense? Not really. It doesn't tabs. We can back them up with a couple of exiled sentinels, I suppose. And a void monarch. I don't know. Like, I want them to be far back enough so that they don't get in the way of the chariots hitting the monarchs. Like, all my money is riding on the monarchs. Or, more specifically, riding on these stupid horses and whether or not they can run over my underworld gods. There we go. Okay, we got one transformation. That's better than none. I think he hurt his leg there, but he, he'll be fine. That's good. It's better than nothing. Oh, there's the other one. I was going to say, please tell me you didn't just get evaporated by the lightning. Come on, get in there. You got to... At least take out one Thor. No, not like this. <laughs> Even when they're transformed, it doesn't matter. Mjolnir just bag tags them and they drop and they crumple to the ground. I don't understand. Thor isn't even worth that much. He's like a 1700 unit, isn't he? Or maybe a couple of thousand, but like the $3,000 Void Monarch drops. I, I don't know. Whatever we end up using has to be able to survive getting struck by lightning, which is a pretty big ask. So we need to use some pretty big units, just not the biggest unit. Maybe a couple of whips, a couple of liches. I like the idea of using our lightning against theirs. And then shadow walkers to buy time? Something like that? Don't suppose you guys are willing to assassinate a god for me, no? Okay, well, uh... One of the chariots is out of commission, that's good. We blew up the other one, so now it's just the gods. This could not have gone any better for us, honestly. If this doesn't work, then I don't know what we could do. Oh, okay, yep, the lightning is looking good. Drop the chariot, great. We just gotta kill Thor. Come on, oh no, yeah, that hurts. That really hurts. It really does feel like the whip is our only hope. If I can spread them out enough so that they don't get multi-hit by lightning, then I might just be able to overwhelm the enemy that way. We could still get a, a single lich, maybe stick him up here where he could be stuck. I, I could try putting him on the roof, but I don't think he'll be able to reach from there. We've had success in this area before. And then shadow walkers to buy time again, run it. As long as you guys don't get hit by the lightning right off the bat. Okay, now whip the Thor. Whip him. Whip him real good. He's got the exposed nips. Good. Good. That's great. This is actually working really well. Oh, wait. We got two Thors. There's, there's only one Thor left, I think. Come on. Whip him. Whip him, please. Yes. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. I'm pretty sure your prayers are going to fall on deaf ears. The Church of the Wobbly Horse is now, now in the, the clutches, clutches of hell. And there you have it, the evil campaign complete. And with that, I've finished every single campaign level in tabs on camera again. It seems like every time I reach that accomplishment, they go and update the game and I, I gotta do more, but I really hope we do get more. I enjoy playing the campaigns a whole lot. It's one of those places where you can see a pack of raptors attack a group of knights. But either way, I don't think this is nearly enough for an episode, so let's take a look at some custom units. So the first unit to catch my attention is a bit of a strange one. It's called Shaman Totem? With a question mark. I, I didn't add that myself, so I'm, I'm guessing the creator was just as confused as I am. 
<laughs> it didn't come with any kind of backstory. I have no idea what it's supposed to be or what it's going to do, but I'm going to interpret that somebody fed their pet elephant a lot of cactuses and corn, and then six to eight hours later decided I should really mail these turds to somebody. Turns out that somebody was actually the hobbits. All of them. The entire Shire gets the box of elephant poop. That's how this works. Oh. That's very different. I've never seen anything like that before. What's with the ice vortex and, and the random energy geyser? I, I, I didn't even see all of them get frozen in a line and then reheated like chicken nuggets. Oh, what? <laughs> that was a lot to take in. Hold on. We might actually want to use some units who are a little bit sturdier and a lot more spread out. So how about the hoplite? You know, I, I can get a couple dozen of them. Okay, I, I know it's not quite 300, but they'll meet the same fate. Let's be perfectly honest. <laughs> so we do have an instant freeze vortex. I don't know where that came from. The mix of fire breath and ice breath. I still don't know what this thing is. It's like Polka Dot Man is blowing his load. Strange. <laughs> All right, I, I, I like it. It's definitely got a whole lot of weird abilities, and it is kind of like a totem in that it doesn't move. It, it's not similar to like the towers that we've seen in past episodes. I do have some of those though. Yeah, this is called the Radiant Glaive Tower, and I mean, it looks like a building, a, a structure, like something straight out of Bloons. Well, as always, the king is none too pleased that there are trespassers on his front lawn who seem to have built some infrastructure and then taken off. I'm telling you, medieval vandals are weird. <laughs> well, we'll get rid of it with some squires. Assuming that they're going to be able to close the distance against this thing, it is called the Radiant Glaive, so I would imagine it's going to huck some glaives at you. Oh yeah, so very similar to the Radiant Glaive unit, except big and bulky and doesn't move around. I'm not sure what else I was expecting there. It's such a strange like subset of units. This one doesn't have the ability to hold other units next to it, which is something that I really liked about the tower that we saw last time, but I, I definitely see a lot of possibilities for this. I've even got some weirder ones. Oh, Jesus Christ. This one blinks and I hate it. It's called Spider Diablo for obvious reasons. Listen, King, don't let me tell you what to do, but I would probably send some knights out instead of squires because this thing looks like it's ready to feed on some medieval man flesh. <laughs> Might want to have armor. I don't even know what a spider could do in tabs. Oh, oh. Oh, the spook ability is really good for a tower, because then medieval units can't easily overwhelm it unless it misses. Yeah, you really need that poison cloud to be a little bit closer. <laughs> they are ravaging your insides. Do you do any damage or do you just waste a lot of time? Because wasting time is a perfectly valid strategy when used in an army. If we had a bunch of other units here that were able to fight and take out these knights while they're wasting their time roaming around, then this battle would be very different. Let me see how you guys are doing. Oh, they're almost dead. Yeah, well, we'll let the spider have its feast. I'm assuming that this cloud is poison. We've seen it before. We've seen it with the weird smoke screens that some units can use, but again, it, it, it's cool that it's something that's only available in the unit creator. I don't think this is something that any unit in tabs uses, like any of the regular factions. Come on, you gotta gas them out eventually. There we go. It's gonna say, how long can you survive in these Oompa Loompa farts for? That is a straight up dragon in tabs. I almost can't believe it. Like, I kind of figured we might fight some kind of big mythical creature today, so I called in Kratos, but it turns out he's gonna be a little bit late, so maybe the farmer faction can deal with it on their own, defend themselves. Don't worry, guys, I'm sure Trogdor here doesn't have any experience burninating all the people. <laughs> Trogdor! He's way wonkier than I would have expected. He looks like a dragon, but he moves like a fly that just got slapped. <laughs> oh no, not like this. 
<laughs> I mean, he could still torch a peasant or two, but man, oh man, that is not quite what I was hoping for. If anything, he should have had a big muscly arm. Then he could at least punch down. Are you okay? Seem to be having a hard go at it. Okay, only one left. Just kind of lower yourself a little bit. I'm afraid to take control of this thing. I, I, I don't think that would be a good idea. I don't want to find out how the sausage gets made. I, I just want to enjoy it on my own and hopefully burn and eat some people. There we go. Is uh, that it? Don't tell me you hit one into the ground. No, it's so broken that it probably slapped a hobbit through the geometry of the game. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Don't worry, you can burn things underground when you're a dragon that's this broken. Well, a promise is a promise. I guess we're gonna have Derp the Magic Dragon here fight against Kratos. I'm being told that it's not a fair fight, that I should actually use two Kratoses, but I doubt that. If you can throw that axe without throwing yourself, that would be kind of cool. All right, um, not quite what I was hoping for again. Usually you throw it, then it comes back. It's really satisfying and it makes for like one of the best games ever made. But in this case, you're just kind of throwing yourself and trying to give the dragon an ice enema. It's a bold strategy. We'll see if it pays off, but I have my doubts. <laughs> See, if you look at it from this angle, then it almost seems like a normal fight. <laughs> like the dragon isn't hovering feet off the ground as Kratos just frequently gets torched and does backflips over it. Yeah, this might end up being a draw to be perfectly honest. Like, you can't have stupid cancel out stupid. You just get double stupid. Admittedly, old Kratos and the Leviathan Axe left a little to be desired, but maybe we'll have luck with younger Kratos and the Blades of Chaos? Well, the tabs math is telling me once again that this isn't going to be a fair fight, and the stupid math is telling me once again that we're going to end up with double stupid, but I'll run it anyway. And I'm just going to throw it out there because I've had a lot of people think that, like, I only play video games for YouTube or that I should always record myself when playing a game, but I play games for myself all the time. You know, gaming is a hobby that's a lot more entertaining when you don't have to be entertaining yourself. I was gonna say the most recent God of War is hands down one of the best games ever made. Like Kratos retrieving the Blades of Chaos is probably the best moment in video game history. The one that stands out the most to me over 20 years of playing video games. If you haven't played it, you definitely should. I swear this isn't the setup to a really dumb punchline, but what do you call a 10 foot tall guy dressed like a shark? Honestly, like it wouldn't be a furry. These sharks don't have fur. Would it be a scaly? I'm going to assume that this is a 10 foot tall scaly called Sharknado, and I'm kind of afraid to figure out why. Despite his large size and strange taste, he only costs 260, so I guess we'll just have three farmers charge up against him and hope that he doesn't. Oh, he throws tornadoes. I kind of figured he was going to turn into a tornado himself. Well, that's still not particularly fair. Fair, assuming, oh, I was gonna say assuming he can move on land because he seems to be having trouble, but then he stood up and seems to have armpit farted a couple dozen shurikens. <laughs> All right then, I don't think sharks can do that. I would normally just move on, but I feel like out of principle, we need to get some sushi real quick. Go ahead and fire away whenever you're ready. There we go. I don't know if that's where the dick would be. You know, because it's technically a shark, but it's also a dude in a costume. I also don't really want to find out. So this unit is apparently called the Wither, and it's modeled after a Minecraft boss. I know about this much about Minecraft, but I know this much about killing dumb stuff in tabs, so bring it on. I'm gonna assume from its very cold looking hands that it wants to try to freeze my unit. So I'm gonna send out a bunch of brawlers. Not only do they have shields, but they're also used to the frigid temperatures. There you go. You see, you can't freeze us so easily. Or so I thought, uh, okay, it also yelled at us and uh, what the hell? Did it turn somebody into a skeleton? 
I'm confused. Why are there skeleton parts? I mean, bones. <laughs> Why are there bones? Where did the bones come from? Where did the skeletons come from? Okay, we won, but at what cost? Can't believe this thing made me forget the word bones. Can I please shoot it with a ballista so that I feel better about myself? Oh, it's quick. It's real quick, but not quick enough. I'm genuinely surprised that somebody would take the time and put in the effort to not only beef up the Jester, because now he costs 6,000 instead of a couple hundred, but make him look really cool. Like, he's super intimidating now. I'm sure this has been a long time coming. Many years of entertaining many kings, and finally he can get his revenge by teleporting into their wheelhouse and... Uh, what is happening right now? Did he just throw something while he was teleported? He's getting smacked on, that's for sure. He's only a little guy, guys. Little guys? Wait, there's two of them now. What the hell? Wait, where did one of the kings go? Uh, did, oh no, the king is dead. Okay, well, the king is dead, long live the kings. I, I, I just assumed that he had converted. That would be creepy. If you could have like some kind of clown unit that would convert other units into clowns, what a friggin' nightmare. There's three of them now, I think. They're so fast that I can't keep up and they're throwing knives from somewhere. Like, did you see that? It just came out of the sky and they're laughing. Oh no, 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 no. I don't want anything that's half my height putting its face between my butt cheeks and then laughing through a mask. That, that's just too far, that crosses so many boundaries. I'm genuinely curious how we would kill this thing now. Like if I have a bunch of farmers bait it out, then maybe I could hit it with a ballista, but I doubt it. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if it was too smart for that, or if the ballista just straight up missed like that. <laughs> well, we uh, might have a problem. Damn, he's quick. So he's here, but he's also here. Would really appreciate if you guys hit your target. It's just one man. Oh, he decided to skip the farmers this time. Dick move. We missed him again. I think he's hurt. He's, he's thinking about it. He was playing. He was acting the fool. Of course he was. Or one of them were. I can't keep track of these things. They don't even multiply like the Monkey King. That's what you would think the multiplication would be like. But it's completely different. It's some kind of weird demonic multiplication. I don't like it. It's freaky. I'm telling you right now, we're going to kill this thing one way or another. I will call in as many Chuko Nu as I need. Send in all of the fully automatic crossbows. See how much he's laughing when he's a pin cushion. Oh, um... What you guys shooting at? Because, oh, he can deflect. Of course he can. It's <laughs> gonna say you guys are missing everything. You just scattered them across the lawn and they're multiplying way faster now. So they can deflect and they can multiply depending on how many enemies there are. And they don't seem to overly care about anything. All right then. <laughs> I genuinely can't think of a strategy to kill these things. Maybe we could blow them up. That seems like wishful thinking. I don't even want to sit and wait to watch this because we're not going to win, are we? I mean, we have done damage. It's pissed. It's enraged like the uh, Yarl would be. But I just don't see us killing it anytime soon. Let's see how much damage they've done. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to slowly walk up and uh, you guys can finish this one off. Oh, he deflects automatically. Well, isn't that cute? What if I turn around and maybe you guys could shoot him in the ass? I literally need to hold this thing down for it to be killed, and even then, it takes a minute. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It does have one arrow going through its brain, and after that, it was like, nope, never again. Okay, this will be my last attempt at fairly killing one of these things. I'm just gonna use nothing but barrel rollers. <laughs> if I send in enough boom, that they can't possibly survive, right? The puffy pants can't be bomb-proof. Oh! The fact that the battle hasn't ended makes me think that he's still alive. We blew ourselves up. Yeah, for a second I thought that worked, but no. Blue victory. I'm not blue. 
Alright, but you know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And what a badass shot to end on. Like, he's literally laughing at us as the bodies fly. But I gotta say, I really want to make more episodes focusing on a bunch of these custom units, so long as they're gonna be entertaining. So you leave some recommendations, make stuff, put it on the workshop, I'll be sure to keep looking, and maybe if I get enough for a video, I'll return to do something like this again soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.